Hey guys, welcome to another Fur Pure One revision video. Today we're taking a look at the via stress substitution. So this is quite a nice little topic um, which covers looking at some sometimes tricky integrals which we may not be able to compute using our standard kind of results. So this basically uses kind of T substitutions um, to substitute and then basically compute the integral. So there's only two questions in this video. It's quite a small um, basically topic within the chapter seven. So these two questions should basically cover all um, bases and kind of what we can be asked. So let's take a look at this first question here. So question 26. So we're asked to use a substitution t equals tan x over 2 to show that the integral 1 over 1 minus tan x plus cos x can be written as this and then we're asked to evaluate it. So these questions are very standard. First I'll ask you to get it in um, a required form and then part b you'll ask to be able to perform that integration. So the reason for that is so if you can't get the part a you can get the part B, but usually the part A is easier than the part B. So let's have a go at this one here. So question 26, let's just start up here. Question 26A. So the first thing we need to write down for any of these questions is look at the trig functions that we've got. So this question, we've got sine x and cos x. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write my T substitutions for sine x and cos x. So remember, sine x is just two T divided by 1 plus t squared and cos x well that's just going to be 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared okay so that's sine x and that's cos x now I would normally always start by writing something else down but for now I won't write it down just yet we'll start doing the, um, the manipulation and then I'll write down what I would always start at the beginning so now let's, let's use the fact that we've got the t substitution of sine x and cos x and we can change our integral here. So we can write this now as 1 over 1 minus sine x plus cos x. Well this is equal now to 1 over 1 minus, so that's 2t over 1 plus t squared. Like so, and we've got plus cos x, so plus this here. Okay, so the good thing that kind of jumps out at me here is that these two functions, these trig functions that we've substituted in uh, using our t substitutions here, they've both got a common denominator. So that's kind of the good kind of like thing here. Because of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to times both top and bottom here by 1 plus t squared, so we can kind of get rid of this denominator here. So when I do that, well, the numerator is just 1 times 1 plus t squared, so we get 1 plus t squared. Then in the denominator, we've also got this 1 here. So if you times that one by 1 plus t squared, you're going to get just again 1 plus t squared. So my denominator is 1 plus t squared minus 2t plus 1 minus t squared plus 1 minus t squared. Right. Now at this stage here, we're not quite at the same result as what they've got. So why is that the case? Well, because the issue here is, so this is our integral. Now this is in terms of t, but our initial integral is in terms of x. So how do we combat that? Well, what we actually do is we replace this dx here with a substitution. And what you always do is you always write this down as a standard result. So dx is simpler. And if you don't know how to memorize this, just use sine x. It is, it is literally just the same, but in the numerator where it's 2t, it's 2dt, okay? So 2dt over 1 plus t squared, okay? So that's not to do with that, that's just dx separately on its own. Because what I'm going to do now is in, in put this in here. So we're times in by dx, so times by 2 over 1 plus t squared dt. So we've now got our new... Um, variable that we're integrating with respect to. So at this stage here now, we can just start simplifying. Um, so let's just simplify the numerator first. So that's 1 plus t squared divided by. So uh, what have we got here? So something looks like it's possibly gone wrong, has it? Oh no. So yeah, the t squareds will cancel. So they cancel with each other. I'm then going to get left with 1 plus 1, so 2, minus 2t, two like so. Then we times this by 2 over 1 plus t squared dt. 
and now we can simplify. Multiplying this here, they're going to cancel. And now we've got 2 over 2 minus 2t. And again, if I just divide top and bottom by 2, we just get the result that we've been given here. So dividing top and bottom of this quotient here by 2, we just get 1 over 1 minus t dt as required. Okay, so that's part A there. Thank you, Zafir. Four marks. So hopefully nothing too crazy there. Um, so we're just getting the required result. And then part B, we're asked to basically integrate what we've just got. So the fact that it says hence evaluate means you're going to use this here. Okay, that's the, that's the beauty of these substitutions. We get the integral in a much simpler form to work with. So let's clear all of part B. Uh, sorry, all of part A. And let's have a go at part B. So part B here. Well, we're looking to find the integral now of 1 over 1 minus sine x plus cos x dx. So it's between pi over 4 and 0. Pi over 4 and 0. Okay. Now, we're going to use what we've just got. So we just got 1 over 1 minus t. So the new integral is... 1 over, so sorry, 1 over 1 minus t dt. But our limits will change because we've we've used a substitution. Okay, and remember when you're integrating by substitution, you've got to be considerate of the limits. So what's the new limit? Well, all we're going to obtain for the new limit is when x is pi over 4 here. So pi over 4 divided by 2. So our new limit would be tan of x, which is pi over 4 divided by 2, so we get pi over 8. Sometimes it can be easier to write that in its its exact form. Sometimes you can just leave it as tan pi over 8 if you'd like. Um, it's completely up to you. But for this one, I'll leave it as it is, tan pi over 8. That's my upper limit. And then 0, just from my bottom limit, because obviously if you put tan of 0 over 2, when you evaluate that, that will be 0 as well. OK, so now at this stage, this is just a really standard integration now. Um, from your A-level maths. So if you integrate this here, think about the derivative of the numerator, that'd be minus one. So what we're actually gonna get is minus one. Um, what I'll do is I'll put it in square brackets so we can evaluate it as well. So minus one of one minus t, um, and my upper limit is tan pi over eight. And my lower limit being zero. And then at this stage here, all you've got to do is sub your limits in, okay? So, for example, it'd be minus ln of 1 minus tan pi over 8, and then minus ln of, well, if you, the 1 minus 0 is just going to give you ln of 1, which is 0, okay? So, you're just going to put this limit in, essentially, here. Make sure you take the minus of it. And if you do that, what you should get is 0.535. I think, that did, I, think I did that to three decimal places, um, but because there's no actual required accuracy, that would be sufficient there. So there we have it. So that's quite a nice one to actually basically get your final answer. Sometimes it can be a little bit more complicated, and sometimes you will need to use partial fraction um, to obtain basically your, your actual solution. So the next question demonstrates that using partial fractions. So this is the next question here. Again, we're using the substitution t equals tan x over 2. And we want to find the integral of 1 over 12 minus 13 sine x dx. So again, like we always do, write down um, the trig function that we're working with. So in this question, we've only got sine x, okay? So we'll need to worry about sine x. So what is sine x? Well, that's 2t over 1 plus t squared there, okay? But again, we're going to have to use dx at some point, the substitution for dx. So I always write that down as well at the beginning. dx is equal, again, to the exact same as this, but with a d in the numerator. 2dt over 1 plus t squared. And now at this stage, we take the initial integral that we're given and use our t substitutions here. So we can write that now as um, so it's going to be 1 over 12 minus 13 lots of this my brackets are a little bit off 
and then we times it by dx. So dx is this expression here, 2 dt over 1 plus t squared. So there we have it. So now what we've done is essentially we've transformed the variable that we are integrating with respect to um, from x to t. Okay, so that's kind of the magic here. So now, um, at this stage here, we're just going to simplify just like we did with the previous one. So if we deal with this numerator first, it's going to be equal to 1 over 12 minus 26t. 26 26t 26 over 1 plus t squared times 2 over 1 plus t squared. So at this stage here, nothing too complicated. Just like we did with the last one, I'm going to times 3 by 1 plus t squared with this fraction here. So my numerator will be 1 plus t squared divided by, so it's 12 lots of 1 plus t squared, so I'm going to get 12 plus 12t 12 squared, the numerator, sorry, in the denominator. Um, we've got minus 26t, and then we times it by this. Okay, like so. So then at this stage here, again, we're just going to start simplifying. We can cancel these 1 plus t squareds. So what I get left now with is 2 over, simplifying this here, but we can't do, really do anything with it, we just get 12t squared, um, minus 26t, plus 12. And notice, if you divide top and bottom by 2, we get left with the expression that we required here. So this would be with dt. So therefore, dividing top and bottom by 2, this is 1 over 6t squared minus 13t plus 6 with respect to t there. Okay, so that's the first three marks there. Just getting it in the required form. And then part b is where we're at to performing the integration with the limits. So we can get rid of all that because we know what part b is equal to anyway. Um, so let's have a go with it. So part b, hence evaluate. So we're going to use this last form that we got here. So the 1 over 6t squared so on. So, we're looking for the integral here. So this is pi over 3. You can't really see the limit. It's not too clear. Pi over 3, 0, um, of 1 over 6t squared minus 13t plus 6 dt. Okay. So at this stage here now, first let's just consider the new limit. So this would be tan of pi over 3 divided by 2, so that would be tan of pi over 6. And that is what we can get for an exact um, answer here if you really want. You can write that as 1 over root 3. That's 1 divided by root 3. So that's my upper limit. And with the bottom limit being 0, if you sub that in, that'll just be 0 anyway. Okay, so then my new limits. This 6t squared minus 13t plus 6, we can actually factorise that. And when we factorise that, we can then use partial fractions, okay? So we can now split this up into a over. So now we split it up into the factorization. So it's 3 minus 2t plus b over uh, 2 minus 3t dt. Okay? So at this stage here, now, now you need to use partial fractions with it being equal to 1. So this should hopefully be two standard. I'm not going to go through the whole partial fraction um, decomposition here. Um, but what you should get is a equals minus 2 fifths and b equals 3 over 5. Um, I'm just assuming with being fairly pure one, you are com confident and comfortable with partial fractions. Um, but if there's any issues, just please let me know down below. I'll try my best to explain it. So that's a equals minus 2 fifths, b equals 3 fifths. So at this stage here now, we need to rewrite this integral using a and b. So, this we can rewrite this now as um, my limit is 1 over root 3, 0. So a is minus 2 fifths, so minus 2 fifths of 3 minus 2t. Plus, so this would be plus 3 over 5, plus 3 over 5, 2 minus 3t dt. Okay, the first thing I see here is I can plot this factor of fifth to the front of the integral, so that's one fifth, just using linearity. Zero. And now at this stage here, so my first one will stay the same, so it's minus two 
over 3 minus 2t. We're going to just do a little bit of a manipulation here just to make this a little bit easier to calculate. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to express this here as a minus. So what I mean by that is it is still positive, but we can manipulate it. So what I mean is that I'm going to subtract it, but then make it minus 3 on top. So it is still plus 3 over 2 minus 3t. But the reason I'm writing it like this is because it makes it easier to then compute the final integral. So 2 minus 3t, the denominator, with respect to t. Okay, and now at this stage here, now we can start basically integrating here. So integrating these separately. And then we can just substitute in our limits here, 1 over root 3. Well, these are both very good. Because if you look at them, this is minus 2. But the denominator is minus 2 as well. Um, well, minus 2t, we differentiate, you get minus 2. That's good. Same again here. This is again why we've made it minus. Um, just to make life a bit easier. Denominator, minus 3t. Numerator, minus 3. Okay, so that's kind of the reason we're doing that. So, if you integrate this, what you should get here is 1 over 5. And then, this should be ln of 3 minus 2t. Minus ln of 2 minus 3t. Okay. And then again, don't forget the integral, uh, sorry, the limits of the integral would be 1 over root 3 and 0. Oh, well, essentially, it's not an integral anymore, um, but that's what we're going to substitute in 1 over root 3 and 0. This, now we can write this as just one um, logarithm. So just using your rule of logarithms here, if you're minusing um, two separate logarithms, you can write that as a quotient. So this is now going to be equal to one fifth lun of three minus two t divided by two minus three t. Again, one over root three, zero. So then, at this stage here, all you need to do is substitute one over root three in and zero, just like you would with a standard integral. So I'm not going to do that because it's it's, it's just lines of working where you're just substituting in. So it shouldn't be too bad. What you should get is 1 over 5 or a fifth ln 2 over 9 times 12 plus 5 root 3. And then if you actually put that in on your calculator, your final answer, so final answer should be roughly somewhere around um, 0 0.305 so I did that to three decimal places and there we have it so that's the final five marks there so only two questions but as you can see they are quite long um, usually worth seven to eight marks these kind of questions but I don't think anything too crazy kind of um, is going on just there's just a few different steps going on so write down your individual um, t substitutions don't forget dx it's 2dt over 1 plus t squared Rearrange your integral and then just start using. Usually, this is often the case where you have to use partial fractions. Um, every now and then, you might have to use completing the square, and you can use completing the square if you if you'd prefer. Um, I prefer using partial fractions if it is an option. Um, but yeah, you can use completing the square as well. But anyway, that brings us to the end of this one. Um, I hope it's helped. If there's any issues or if there's any mistakes or anything unclear, please just let me know down below.